Welcome back. A byproduct of groundwater are things like caves, caverns, and sinkholes. This is a fun one. So now, again, we're talking groundwater, we're talking underground. So what is the difference between a cave, cavern, and a sinkhole? Let's define those real quick. A cave is any cavity in the ground that is large enough that some portion of it will not receive direct sunlight. Okay? Um, there are different ways caves can form, but that's the definition of a cave. A cavity in the ground, large enough that some portion of it will never receive direct sunlight. A cavern is a type of cave naturally formed in soluble rock. Soluble rock is rock that is dissolvable. All right? um, so it's a type of cave, a cavern type of cave formed in a soluble rock with the ability to grow speleotherms. Speleotherms, fancy term for uh, stalactites or stalagmites. If you've ever done any um, tours in caves, uh, these terms you may have heard, uh, stalactites uh, hang tight to the ceiling. They're the pointy thing that, that hangs from the, the top of a cave or cavern, excuse me. Stalagmite are the uh, things that grow from the bottom up. Stalactites hold tight to the ceiling. Stalagmites might grow tall enough to reach the ceiling. That's how you remember those. But that's what a cavern is. And then a sinkhole, it's a depression or hole in the ground caused by some form of collapse in the subsurface layer. So what's going on below ground, there's some sort of collapse, and then the ground above it falls in. Again, usually in soluble rock, rock that's dissolvable. All right, rocks that's dissolvable. So here you see a cavern because it has all these stalactites and stalagmites. Sometimes they grow big enough from the ceiling and the floor to connect to create a column. Um, again, caverns you typically only find in soluble rock, dissolvable rock, like limestone. More on that in a second. A sinkhole is created at the surface because something below ground fell in, and then that just kind of ate its way through, and you get a sinkhole to the underground. Some of these, some sinkholes can be hundreds of feet across. All right, so just a, a few different images you see in some of those things that I've discussed. So. How does groundwater play a part in caves, caverns, sinkholes, etc.? So, typically, not always, you need dissolvable rock. Rock that is able to be dissolved by weakly acidic water. All right? A great example of that is limestone. There are some other rocks and minerals we'll talk about here in just a second, but most commonly, limestone is a soluble rock. When, um, when precipitation uh, occurs. Sometimes that precipitation contains uh, 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 you know, small bits of carbon dioxide and that can mix with the, the rainwater to create something called carbonic acid, acid rain. We talked about this in a previous lesson, um, that uh, when we're talking about sediments and sedimentary rocks. So acid rain, um, it's not like in the movies where it hits your skin and your, and your skin's on fire and, and melts off. It's weakly acidic. Uh, but still acidic nonetheless. So over time, millions of years, as that acid rain, acidic rainwater, percolates down through the grounds, especially if we have soluble rock, limestone, well, that weakly acidic water over time will eat away at that limestone. It right? dissolves away that carbonic acid in the, in the water, in the groundwater, eats away that limestone, create bigger and bigger um, caverns. Well, over time, if the water level drops, plate tectonics, shift in climate, whatever it may be, the water level drops, you now expose these underground caverns in which stalactites and stalagmites uh, may grow. So that's kind of how you, how you get that. Um, sometimes the precipitation itself does not have to be acidic, so acid rain. It could be perfectly fresh rain, and as it percolates down through the soil and top layers of the ground, it can pick up some carbon material and thus turning the groundwater into carbonic acid uh, to help that process along as well. And that process of uh, acidic, slightly acidic, very slightly acidic groundwater um, eating away, dissolving away limestone is called dissolution, dissolving dissolution. It's the, again, the dissolving of rock material occurs when uh, slightly acidic rainwater passes through sol soluble, dissolvable rocks, uh, producing these cavities. You can produce caves, caverns, sinkholes, sinking streams, large springs, a number of different things, all collectively known as karst. 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 
Um, dissolution is, is the most common cave forming method. So if you're in a cave, chances are it was a uh, natural cave. Chances are it was due to this process. Not always, but chances are uh, it could be. Um, so what are some soluble types of rocks and minerals where we would get this dissolution process happening underground? Uh, some minerals include halite and gypsum. Uh, very susceptible to uh, carbonic acid or weakly acidic groundwater. You can start to dissolve this material out, forming caverns. Limestone, for sure, by far the most common, including different types uh, of limestone, like travertine. Chalk is a, is a type of limestone. Coquina, uh, coquina excuse me, uh, is also a type of limestone. All of these uh, are soluble rocks susceptible to, to carbonic acids, susceptible to being dissolved away. Marble, which is metamorphosed limestone, limestone that received a little bit of the heat, a little bit of pressure to change. So since marble derives from limestone as its parent rock, it also is soluble, uh, so it can dissolve. Uh, and dolostone as well. Not something we talked about in this class, but it's like a cousin of limestone. There you go, cousin of limestone. Um, it's different than limestone because it has some magnesium, uh, a magnesium molecule added to it. Nothing you really know, but just a close cousin to limestone, so it kind of acts similar. And again, when you kind of get this uh, water, uh, weakly acidic water, interacting with these minerals and rocks, you create a type of topography called karst. So it's karst topography, um, which is a very complex landscape characterized by small closed basins, sinkholes, cave cavern openings, uh, weird drainage patterns. That would be karst topography. Um, this type of topography is most uh, common in regions that are underlain by soluble carbonic rocks, uh, or carbonate rocks, excuse me, like limestone, marble, etc. Um, the reason they're called carbonate rocks is limestone and marble contain uh, some, some, um, uh, some form of, of carbon there, carbonate rock. So uh, you typically find this type of karst topography with caves, caverns, sinkholes in an area where the bedrock the foundation of the place is made up of you know limestone typically marble or some of those other minerals and uh, rocks that were mentioned on the previous slide a great example of that here in arizona is karchner caverns maybe some of you have been here about 50 miles southeast of tucson uh discovered in 1974 but kept secret until 1998 they were really trying to to get this to become a state park which they succeeded it, it is a state park and it finally opened to the public in 1999 um so it is open to the public if you do ever want to go here it's my a suggestion that you make a reservation you can go on their website and make a reservation because you, they give you tours. You can't just go and walk around. They kind of give tours, and once they fill up, they fill up. So make reservations before you go. Um, what you see here are some stalactites hanging tight to the ground. These down here are stalagmites, uh, and if they ever grow and connect, they can form columns. But these formations uh, were growing continuously for tens of thousands of years. Um, there's about 2.5 miles of passages here in the Karchner Caverns. Um, it is, it is uh, soluble rock. These are caverns, so this was dissolved out uh, soluble rock, so that dissolution process, acidic groundwater carving these out, these caverns out. So the whole, the whole cavern system is the, the tan color, and the paths you see are some of the, the tours that you, can, that you can take into some of the different rooms and such. So the timeline of how it formed, so about 300 to 350 million years ago, deposition of sediment and lithification uh, was occurring. Uh, this is um, limestone, so you know the, So what is that telling you? So remember limestone, as well as most sedimentary rocks, form in, in the shallow ocean sediment deposits in the shallow oceans. So that indicates ocean was in Arizona, in that portion of Arizona, 300 to about 350 million years ago, as that, deposit, or that sediment was deposited and eventually lithified, compaction, cementation, turning it to stone. Uh, fast forward to about 5 to 15 million years ago, the basin and range faulting be began to occur. Remember that, that shift uh, off the west coast to a uh, more of a transform boundary, uh, causing the this portion of the North American plate to, to relax, thin out, 
uh, ex tensional stress, pulling, cracking, uh, you get your basins and ranges. So all of that occurred. That helped to move some rocks around, including where that Karchner Cavern uh, is located, uh, moving it a little bit closer to the surface. So about 200,000 to 500,000 years ago, you get that dissolution process uh, because the cave is uh, at the water table now and it's able to be dissolved by any weakly acidic water, groundwater. Um, the oldest identified speleotherm is about 194,000 years old. So that's telling us the reason we know uh, that the water table wasn't in the cave anymore it was it, the water has to be gone for speleotherms to grow. So if the oldest one we find is 194,000 years ago, then, then the water table must have left around 200,000 years ago. Um, so you get a lot of speleotherm growth from 70 to 120,000 years ago. They actually found um, a, uh, a fossilized ancient giant sloth fossil inside the caverns, uh, which is about 80,000 years old. Uh, this is a, a prehistoric creature and before any humans were here. So this giant sloth in North America uh, was entered or washed into the, the caverns and got lost or was washed in and was dead and just... So they found that that skeleton, that fossil skeleton there. Uh, the, they recorded bat use uh, in some of the, the larger rooms dating back to about 50,000 years ago. The speleotherms kind of really cut off about 70,000 to 10,000, that decline in growth, uh, because as plate tectonics, as the plates shift due to plate tectonics, climates change, etc., etc., etc. So about 10,000 years ago to present, the uh, climate of Arizona changed more to what it is today. Uh, dry, which is arid, um, so you really decrease that speleotherm growth. So we don't really get any stalactites or stalagmites growing. That's why if you ever go into a cavern or cave system, don't just start breaking things off. They, they will never grow back. So here's a karst map of the United States where we find karst topography. Let me move me real quick. Let's move me up here, I guess. Um, before we go on, let me give you another part of the super secret code. How about uh, number five? Feeling, in the, feeling alive with the number five. You got me? The number five. So what you see here are the carbonate rocks, limestone, uh, marble, dolostone, or dolomite. Um, the darker green are exposed at the surface. The lighter green, they're kind of buried underneath some other rocks or sediment. So you see a lot of the green, so a lot of karst areas. Florida is almost all limestone. A lot of sinkholes. A lot of sinkholes. Same thing with Missouri. Uh, the blue are the evaporates, so uh, some more halite, which is salt, gypsum, so these are minerals that can be um, uh, eroded away. And then you get pseudocarst, so they seem like uh, karst, but they're not the same process. Karst is, again, soluble rocks, but the red are volcanic areas where you can get some caves and lava tubes. Uh, the yellow, unconsolidated, just loose material where you do get some caves, cave, cave type things. Um, so you see that. But in Arizona, you can see there's a lot of limestone right, you know, right at the surface, including down there where Car uh, Karchner Caverns is. Down here, it's one of those little green dots. All right. All right. Let's go ahead and pause there. So we talked about groundwater, what it is, subsidence, if we use it too much, what groundwater can also do, geologically speaking, underground. So we'll pause here. When we come back, we'll talk about water use and scarcity, something that is very important, especially for us living here in the desert. We'll see you back here in just a minute.